Hi, in this lecture I'm going to be covering identity and inverse matrices, which are foundational concepts in linear algebra. This lecture accompanies chapter 2.3 of the deep learning this textbook that this course accompanies, so I recommend uh, you read the text after watching this. Okay, so to understand inverse matrices, we've got to understand identity matrices first, and luckily that's a pretty con easy concept to understand. Um, basically, if we represent the identity matrix with a uppercase I, we have it so that if any we have any matrix A and we multiply it by the identity, we just get A back. Same thing if we do this. So in this case, it is kind of commutative. And if we have some vector X, I X is equal to X again. So you can kind of think of it as the matrix version of the, you know one, uh, a matrix version of the number one. Uh, in that, you know, you just kind of get the same thing back. So what does the identity matrix actually look like? And let's just test it out once just to see that this is true. Well, first, uh, the first question. So identity matrices look like this. So this is the two by two identity matrix. This is the three by three identity matrix. And generally, if we have some n-dimensional identity matrix, we have some ones across the diagonal and then zero. Well, that's not going to be n. Ones all across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And notice that identity matrices, matrices are always square. Okay, so now that we got that down, let's just test it out on a two by two example just to see um, kind of why uh, it works so well. So let's say we have some two, three, four, one and we multiply this by the two by two identity. So we should get two, three, four, one back, unless we do. So we do this dot product with this, so you get two in the top, so that's good already. Two with this, and you got three from that, so three. Now this with this, so then you get four, and this gets zeroed out, so four. And then you now do this with this, and you get one. So it is true, it does work, and very quickly with a vector, it's even, even easier if we have the identity here and a vector like two and four. If we do this with this, that's gonna be two. If we do this with this, it's gonna be four. So it works with vectors as well, clearly. And just one more thing that this doesn't work because as you'll notice, if we have that here instead, if we had that instead, then these dimensions wouldn't work because this you'd have a row and then you wouldn't be able to do it. So. You, this is not true, but this is true, this is true, and this is true. Okay, so now that we got that down, now we can talk about inverse matrices. And inverse matrices, let me just finish covering all this up. Okay, I'll keep this here. So these are properties of identity matrix, matrices. <laughs> but inverse matrices are something quite different, um, but related. So inverse matrices is, um, well, if we have some matrix A, we display the inverse of A with A with a negative one in the uh, superscript. So the inverse is such that A, um, A inverse multiplied by A is equal to I. So that's kind of the simplest term there. Uh, you know, calculating this inverse is a whole other bucket of fish and sometimes you can't calculate this inverse. But let's just do a single example. So let's say we have the matrix two, three, four, one again. And I calculated this inverse using software and there are ways you can calculate inverses by hand, um, but that uses another thing called Gauss-Jordan elimination, which uh, requires some other topics that we don't really need to talk about here. Um, but I was able to uh, get the inverse of this matrix using software. So this is A. And then the inverse of this matrix is, I wrote it down just so I wouldn't get it wrong, um, negative one over 10, um, 3 over 10, 2 over 5, 3 over 10, 2 over 5, and negative 1 over 5. So that's the inverse of this, so that's A, negative 1. So since that's the inverse and this is the uh, true matrix, we should get back the identity. Let's just test that out. So let's do this with that. So that's going to be negative 2 over 10. So it's a little bit more, sorry, it's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more tough because we have some interesting multiplications here. So we do this with this. So we get negative 2 over 10 uh, plus uh, 12 over 10. So that's going to be 10 over 10. So that's going to be equal to, well, let's just do them one at a time. And then we have, uh, so this is going to be 
that's going to be our first thing here. And then our second thing is going to be this with this. So that's going to be negative 3, negative 3 over 10 um, with 3 uh, plus 3 over 10. So then for this last element here, we're going to do this with this. So it's going to be 4 over 5 uh, plus <laughs> a negative 4 over 5. And then here again with this and this, we have 2. So we have 6 over 5 uh, minus 1 over 5. Sorry, that was a bit all over the place, but they get a little more confusing now. So we have this thing here, and notice that this becomes 10 over 10, so that becomes 1. This becomes 0. This becomes um, 0, and this becomes uh, 6, and then that becomes 5 over 5, so that's 1. So we do indeed have the identity matrix coming out of that. So it is indeed the inverse. Um, and this comes in handy, not necessarily for something that we actually compute by hand, but something that is a very useful theoretical tool that we can talk about, uh, especially when we're like solving systems of equations and such. So remember that we had our linear system of equations which you could display in the term ax equals b. Well, we can actually immediately solve for x, as I was mentioning beforehand. Uh, you can immediately solve for the variables x, which remember is just a vector of variables x, y, z, uh, depending on how many variables you have in your linear equations, you can automatically um, you can automatically uh, you can automatically solve for what x, y, and z are by doing a simple matrix inversion kind of algebraic trick here. So if we multiply both sides by a inverse, so the inverse of a, which is our coefficient matrix, then we have this, and then we multiply this side by a negative. So it's always going to be on the left side because it does matter which side you do. So if you do a negative, you multiply by a inverse on this on the left side, you're going to do on the left side here. So you get this. And a this, well, a inverse a uh, simplifies, as we know, by our basically the definition of an inverse matrix is going to equal i. So this is going to be the identity. So that's going to be the identity times x equals a inverse b. And of course, ix, or identity times this vector, is just going to be x. So we can immediately solve for our variables, our variable vector, by taking the inverse of our coefficients matrix and multiplying it by our answers matrix. So that's just a simple kind of nice thing to know, and it's a very important theoretical tool when we're talking about syst uh, solving systems of equations. In real life, when you're actually solving a system of equations, you generally don't do this. You generally don't find the inverse of a and then solve it like this, because finding the inverse of a is actually a lot harder than some other um, maybe less elegant solutions, but a uh, little bit more easy solutions. So generally we don't do this, but it's an important theoretical tool. Um, just kind of knowing in math when you're seeing text, you'll often see stuff like this. So we just so you know that if you have a system of linear equations, you can automatically solve for all the variables just by doing that. Okay, other than that, I think that's about it to talk about inverse matrices. Inverses uh, get talked about quite a bit, and uh, I'll talk about them more uh, throughout the uh, throughout the course, so I think it's just important to get that. Another thing that we're going to notice more and more as we get through this course is that inversing is kind of equivalent to almost dividing, uh, just because, say, we have some a equals b. If we do a inverse on both sides, it's kind of like the same thing as if we had some scalars a equals b, and we divide both sides by a. So if we divided both sides by a, we would just get 1 equals b over a. Similarly, if we put a inverse on both sides, we multiply both sides by a inverse, we get i is equal to a, sorry, a inverse b, and then this, right? So it's kind of similar, and you can kind of think about it like that. It's almost kind of the matrix version of dividing is kind of multiplying both sides by the inverse, and we see a great example of that here. Okay, that's about it. I'll see you next lecture. Bye.